Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, I like to present our project Alphanumeric Zero, which is about implementation and optimization of solvers for differential equation using reinforcement learning techniques. And uh, during this talk, I will focus on machine learning for, S, uh, for SDC. And um, it is not only uh, Robert and me working on this task, but uh, you see here a list of authors and uh, thanks to all of them for their great ideas and cooperation. So we already heard about the solver spectral default corrections yesterday. So I will just give you a short um, algebraic introduction. We like to solve an ODE, which is given here in the PK form, and we like to solve this ODE for one time step. This one time step is given on the interval TL, TL plus one, and um, we now discretize this one time step by introducing further time nodes, and uh, we use a numerical quadrature rule to um, approximate the interval, and then we end up with this M equations. Uh, we have here the sum over the quadrature whites times the right hand side of the ODE. And um, this corresponds to a fully implicit Runge Kutta method. And we can also um, we can also write this M equation in a more compact form, which is given here in ma matrix vector notation. And uh, in this notation, the matrix uh, Q holds uh, the quadrature whites. And um, we see the equation we want to solve here, and uh, we can solve it with a standard Picard iteration. And in order to increase the range and the speed of the convergence, we want to precondition this iteration. And um, we see the preconditioned iteration here. The preconditioner is uh, marked in red in contrast to the system operator, which is just in blue. And the difference between the system operator and the preconditioner is just the matrix uh, Q triangle, which uh, we used instead of the original Q matrix. And we will later see how to set up this matrix uh, Q triangle. And uh, this last formula corresponds to uh, an SDC sweep. So we see here the preconditioned uh, fixed point iteration again, the SDC sweep, and one um, trivial idea to set up the matrix Q triangle is um, to use a more easy um, quadrature rule. For example, we can use uh, the, the, the quadrature whites that um, correspond to the uh, right-hand side or left-hand side of uh, integration, which um, will result in a triangular matrix. And if we use for the precondition a triangular matrix, these um, properties, they directly um, transfer to the SDC sweep. And then we can uh, solve the SDC sweep over the different nodes via forward substitution. And also when we use an implicit or an explicit Q triangle matrix, then the whole iteration will become implicit or explicit. And um, during this talk, we will um, look at three possibilities how to choose this Q triangle matrix. The first one is called the LU trick, and this is uh, quite a standard choice to set up the Q triangle matrix for the SCC preconditioner, and it results in a triangular matrix. It uses the LU decomposition of um, Q transpose, and uh, therefore we can. Um, as said, solves the SDC sweep with forward substitution. For the other two possibilities I like to present, uh, we want to set up a diagonal preconditioner. So we need to choose a diagonal uh, Q triangle. And if we do so, we can um, compute an SDC sweep over the nodes in parallel. And um, the option two I want to present is um, uses techniques from mathematical optimization. I will talk about that in more detail on the next slide. And the other option I like to present is to pick this um, preconditioner with the help of reinforcement learning techniques. And also that is something I um, 
will um, yeah will explain later in more detail. So um, we start with the mathematical optimization and we will set up an optimization problem for the so-called test equation, which is given by ut is equal to lambda u. And we will uh, later use this um, preconditioner that we optimize for the test equation also for more general PDEs and hope that it is also well suited for uh, these more general PDEs. So we can write down an STC sweep for the test equation, which I have done here. And, um, and we can also write down the iteration matrix of the STC sweep for the test equation. And um, if we look at the iteration matrix, then we see if we send the delta t lambda to minus infinity, then uh, the limit of the, um, of the iteration uh, matrix is given by identity minus the inverse of the Q triangle uh, times Q. And the Q triangle um, is the one we want to set up. And um, for an optimal preconditioner, um, at least for good initial guests, we know that the spectral radius of the um, iteration matrix needs to be uh, small. So um, we now formulate that as a, a minimization problem that we want to minimize uh, the spectral radius of this limit approximation of the iteration matrix of our test equation. And um, using a numerical optimizer, we can just solve this minimization problem. I have written down um, the solution here for, um, for a different number of um, of, uh, of time nodes for m equal 2, m equal 3, m equal 4, and so on. And um, later, when I refer to the opt method, then I, uh, I'm talking about these numbers that I use as a Q a triangle matrix for the SDC preconditioner. So in the next step, we want again to set up uh, the Q triangular matrix as a diagonal matrix, but this time we are losing, uh, we are using techniques from reinforcement learning. So our goal is to train a network in advance and uh, this network learns uh, by itself how to choose the best preconditioner. And in the end, I have a network um, for a fixed number of um, time nodes. And this network can give me, dependent on my lambda delta t, an optimal choice for my Q triangular matrix. And um, the way how the training works is that I have this uh, reinforcement learning agent. And I show him during the training phase the factor delta t lambda. And then um, the agent, it make a choice for the diagonal um, Q triangle matrix. And um, I need to tell the agent if this was a good choice or not. And I'm doing that by the so-called reward, which is given as a number. And we define the reward as a negative uh, spectral radius of the iteration matrix that depends on, um, on the Q triangle matrix the um, agent just picked. So if you make a good choice, then this value is nearly zero. And if it, uh, if it make a bad choice, then this is a large negative number. So in, um, yeah, so this is what we do. And um, we, uh, we use uh, MLP a network, a class of a feedforward reinforcement learning algorithm, uh, a, a class of an um, feedforward artificial, artificial neural network. And we also use some uh, standard reinforcement learning algorithms. And the important thing for the training phase is just that we, um, um, that we have the specific setup that we verify the learning rate over the time for the training. But uh, the most important aspect of this is that this training results in a network and this network can, um, can give me an, um, an optimal uh, Q triangle for a specific lambda delta T. 
So, and we see here um, the result for such a network that was trained for um, three um, time nodes. Um, we um, asked the net network um, to solve the test equation with uh, different um, negative lambdas and um, we um, we um, we wrote down here the numbers of iterations uh, we needed for SDC to set the residual below uh, a given tolerance and uh, we see in blue the results for the reinforcement learning setup and in uh, red for the LU decomposition and the opt is given in green and we see that the reinforcement learning um, uh, preconditioner is in most cases uh, the best choice. So we will now apply this to more uh, general PDEs and we start with the heat equation and um, using fast Fourier transformation, we can uh, we can transfer this PDE into a system of um, N decoupled ODEs. And um, yes, these, these ODEs look really similar to um, the test equation we trained the network with, with uh, where the minus kappa square takes over the role of the lambda. So we can now um, choose these uh, N decoupled um, ODEs using um, for each one a specific uh, choice of the preconditioner given by on our trained agent. So um, the specific schedule looks as uh, following. First, we transform the initial values into uh, the um, four year space. Then we need to calculate um, the Q triangle. For the opt or for the LU method, um, the Q triangle is constant, but for the reinforcement learning agent, it will uh, give us a result um, which is dependent uh, on the space component um, on the minus uh, delta T kappa square. So um, we are using different um, Q triangle um, matrices here for solving the heat equation. And um, after that, we do the calculations, the SDC sweeps. We do them uh, serial over the time steps. We do um, the different SDC iterations and uh, the SDC sweep itself um, over the um, time nodes is sequential for um, LU and it can be done uh, in parallel for uh, RL and for OPT. And of course, because of the uh, Fourier transformation, it is also decoupled in space. I can also do a parallelization in space. And um, after these calculations, I uh, transform my solution back into the real space. So what we have not done um, for the project so far is um, optimizing the prediction of um, the Q triangular matrix. So when I now show you the runtime, these runtimes are only for the calculations. So for the moment, I neglect this initialization. So we see here first the number of um, iterations for the heat equation in 3D, which I need with the different um, um, SDC setups. And we see that the um, our agent is uh, much better than the op choice and it's nearly as good as uh, the, the standard choice, the LU. And we here see now the runtimes and as said, this is for the calculations only. And uh, the LU, it, is, uh, it uses all processors to uh, parallelize um, the example in space and the RL and the opt they are using, um, I, uh, I do the calculations with three nodes in time. Um, they use uh, three groups of processors for time parallelization and um, the rest for uh, space parallelization. So for example, if I calculate with six processors, then um, I have three groups uh, where two processors uh, 
are parallel in space on each node. So, and we see that the, um, that the pa uh, parallel speed up with LU is uh, flattened down with taking more cores and that the speed up is better with the space time parallelization that I can achieve with RL or with opt. And uh, because opt needs less iteration, it shows um, the best timing for the calculations. Okay, so uh, here's the second e example. It is the Allen Kahn equation, where I have in addition um, this nonlinear term. And um, this nonlinear term I cannot um, evaluate in the Fourier space, and therefore I'm using an IMAX scheme for the solution. And with the IMAX scheme, I'm um, treating the, the first term, the Laplace term, I treat in an implicit way. And there I'm using uh, the reinforcement learning, the opt and the LU in the way I have already done it before with the heat equation. And um, the nonlinear term, I don't use a preconditioner. I set the uh, Q triangular matrix just to zero. And um, yeah, here I see a first example where I choose um, the, the epsilon equal to one. So the nonlinear term, it scales with one over eps uh, square. And uh, we see um, nearly the same results for the solver. But if I choose the epsilon smaller, then I see a bigger difference. And um, I see nearly the same result as before that the RL is nearly as good than the LU um, preconditioner and it's uh, much better than the, the op choice. And um, here again, the runtimes. This is a 2D example, and I used uh, five uh, nodes for time discretization. And uh, because I don't have so much elements uh, or I don't need so much elements in space for this uh, example, I don't have a, a spatial speed up at all. And um, it seems to be better in this case to use um, to use um, a, a time parallelization only, which is possible with uh, RL or OPT. So um, here in this example, I uh, want to present the, um, the Schrödinger equation because I want to show that um, the reinforcement agent can also deal with uh, complex numbers. And uh, I solved it with an IMAX scheme again, where I treated the Laplace term implicit. And um, for the nonlinear term, I did not use the preconditioner. And um, we see again that, um, that, um, that the, the diagonal preconditioner they show a better scaling with space-time parallelization than uh, space parallelization only. And uh, the RL is better than the opt preconditioner because um, we it needed less iterations. So as a uh, last example, I want to present the advection diffusion equation. And um, if we transfer this equation to the Fourier space, then I have uh, two linear terms. So I can uh, solve it as before with the IMAX scheme, where I just treat um, the Laplace term in an implicit way. and um, Or I can uh, solve it fully implicit. And um, I tried all of these options. And um, as expected the solvers in a um, uh, full implicit way. They are better than the IMAX solvers in terms of iterations. And uh, here in this case, it is not, not really more expensive to using uh, the, the full implicit um, setup. So this is also reflected in, in the timings where we see again that the reinforcement uh, learning method uh, shows the best um, runtime and um, together with opt solver with the space time parallelization, a better speed up than LU with uh, space parallelization only.
So um, I now like to, uh, to summarize my talk. We have seen that we can enable uh, parallel um, uh, parallelization for the node points for SDC if we choose a diagonal um, Q triangle matrix for the preconditioner. And um, we have seen two ways how to set up this uh, diagonal Q triangle on the one hand by mathematical optimization and on the other hand by a pre trained RL network. And um, regarding to iteration numbers, um, the reinforcement learning choice uh, was so far uh, in many examples uh, better than the standard choice. And what we still need to do in our project is to optimize the network in terms of uh, prediction speed. And um, what we also want to do in the future is um, to combine the node parallelization we have seen here with a diagonal preconditioner um, for SDC with um, uh, time steps that are also computed in uh, parallel. So we can combine that with a fast algorithm. And um, here, um, uh, three takeaways. Take um, there, we have seen there exist in principle diagonal SDC preconditioners, which are much more efficient than the um, standard choice. And we can use reinforcement learning techniques to uh, pick an optimal Q triangle matrix. And uh, this diagonal preconditioner, it enables um, parallelization across the node. And uh, therefore, there are also new combinations for space-time parallelization possible.